Atletico Madrid as Dortmund win by four games to two as we welcome in Luis Garcia and the one man who had belief that Borussia Dortmund could do it, could turn oh. things around after that first leg defeat. We accuse him of bias, of just supporting German teams, but no, Jürgen Klinsmann knows best. Uh, Jürgen, what a night in Dortmund that was. It was a special night in Dortmund. It was unbelievable to watch this game. Um, obviously, it started furious. You know, after three, four minutes, it could have been 1-1 already. Sabitz had a big chance. Then, then Morata had the other one. It could have been 1-1 already after five minutes, basically. Then Dortmund really got into a rhythm and scored the first two goals, which I agree with. The goalkeeper didn't look uh, so well in both of those goals. Then uh, Atletico Madrid came back, uh, second half, Korea made a difference, Korea came on and, uh, and they equalized then. Uh, but I really, I had the feeling from the beginning on that the players uh, from Borussia Dortmund, they were ready for that fight. They were committed, they were committed to go through into the next round. You could see the body language, you, feel, you felt the energy, there was great leadership of some of the players like Emre Can, he played in front of uh, Hummels and Schlotterberg, he played a fantastic game. Sabitzer got better and better the longer the game went on. And when you look at the, the third goal, when you look at that goal from Füllkrug, um, just fantastic. The fantastic run that he makes, you know, he loses his defender, he goes in front of him then and uh, scores that header. Um, and then the stadium, obviously, you know, gets out of control. 80,000 fans, they, they, they sang, it was loud, it was a uh, fantastic atmosphere. Then they, they made another goal and uh, they go into the next round. And this is, this is what it is all about. Champions League in March, April is crunch time. And you as a manager, as a coach, you have to hope that your big players really step it up. And this happened today with, uh, with Borussia Dortmund. Hummels stepped it up, even if he had their own goal. He was always positive, he was always encouraging his teammates. Uh, Emre Can was the leader there from behind. They believed in it and they knew that it's going to be very, very tough against this feisty Atletico Madrid team. But uh, they made it happen, and uh, yeah, I, I think they really deserve to go through into the semis now. I much pre prefer watching this version of Atletico Madrid than the old one a few years ago. <laughs> this game was crazy. Well, Dortmund, Dortmund drink a different juice in this competition to the Bundesliga, don't they? Yeah. They just, they just. You mean I think they topped their group, didn't they? They drink zero yeah, juice yeah. in the Bundesliga. They, they, they <laughs> dropped, they dropped the, of course, with Newcastle, with Milan and PSG. Yeah, they come. I mean, straight away, and you thought, right, they, they are superseding their domestic form in this competition. But still, again, if you'd have said semi-final of Champions League, no, I didn't. See, I could not see that. You know, they got Matson on loan from Chelsea, he was on loan at Burnley, not wanted, doesn't, not deemed good enough to play uh, at, at, the, at, at Stamford Bridge. You got Sancho, you know, surplus of requirements at Man United, mm -hmm. potential attitude problem, conflict with, with, with Ten Hag, feels more comfortable there. You know, and Phil Craig's goal was Ali Mendes. That was an absolute, you know, you talk about a striker's goal. Mm. Early ball, you know, ball in the box, gets across his defender, terrific, just absolutely terrific. But, do you remember we used to say nobody wants to play at Letty? <laughs> Nobody's saying that now because we, I talked about this the other day. They're not keep. I think it, it, the last time they kept a clean sheet was around February time. They're just not keeping this. This dire dull at Letty is just not keeping clean sheets. Even at the weekend against Girona, lost a goal. You know, should have lost two, and they, they, they should have had a penalty against them, won the game. But they're just not solid at the back. And that's a problem. And, and in some sense, they were even lucky to be in this position that they're in. Because if you remember the game in the San Siro against Inter, the only reason the second leg was achievable was because Inter Milan were so wasteful in the final third. Otherwise, you know, Atleti were, would have been out. So the warning signs were there uh, and have been for a while. But Dortmund took advantage of it. Inter will be kicking themselves because Inter... Should, that game should have been 3 or 4 nil Easily in the San Siro. It wasn't, and they allowed Atleti back in. But I did say this for Dortmund. Uh, the way that the ties worked out was much, benefic much more beneficial for them. The fact that they go back to Dortmund in the second leg rather than having to go to the Metropolitana. 
That worked out really well for them, but they took advantage of uh, it. Jürgen, just explain how you can have a team that's 23 points off Bayer Leverkusen at the top of the table in the Bundesliga that can go through a group, as Craig mentioned, that included Milan, PSG and Newcastle, can now be Atletico Madrid and can now be in the semi-finals of the Champions League. How can their form be so different within these two competitions? Yeah, it's, it's really hugely difficult, hugely difficult to keep the same form in all competitions, in a normal championship, in your cup competition, in the domestic one, and obviously in the European leagues. And uh, um, this makes a huge, huge, a big team, obviously, at the end of the day. And, and uh, um, Dortmund struggled with that. The whole season is struggled with that to have uh, consistency in the Bundesliga, in the German Cup. And, uh, but for whatever reason, they stayed. They stayed on a good track in the Champions League and they, they kicked out big, big names. Um, and uh, they're capable to make miracles happen, especially at their home stadium, because it's, it's just rocking when you... When you play in that stadium, you play literally with a man more because these, these people, they push you. When uh, uh, Korea scored the equalizer, it was quiet for about a minute, a minute and a half. And then suddenly you, you heard 80,000 people screaming for Dortmund, pushing them forward, giving them belief. And they started to run, they started to fight, and they started to believe in it again, and they turned it around. And this is, uh, yeah, it is inconsistent. What happens th throughout the, the season with Borussia Dortmund? But on the other, other on the other side, it's it's gorgeous to see. It's really fun to watch, and this is possible. That it's doable to be in the semi-final of the Champions League, even if you had a bad domestic season. What's funny, Ali, as well, is that every time they cut to Edin Terzic on the touchline, they're like, oh, he's still in the job. Yeah. Because it's like, you feel like he's been sacked four or five times already this season. <laughs> and, and he had been hanging on. <laughs> and the reason he had been hanging on is because of the success in Champions League. Because the struggles for Borussia Dortmund in Bundesliga, you just mentioned in the numbers, they have been inconsistent is a nice way to put it. There's been times in which Borussia Dortmund have just been awful in Bundesliga. And the defending of Nico Schlotterbeck and Mats Hummels has been awful. And when I say awful, I mean awful. And then you watch them in Champions League and you go, wait, 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 wait. That, is that, that's the same team from the weekend? And, and it isn't. And the level of energy with which they play today is different than what we see from then and the weekends in Bundesliga. It, it is. It, it, that's just factual. It's not even opinion. You just watch them play, and they're two different versions of Borussia Dortmund. And I'll go back to the second half of the first leg and how much of a reaction there was from Borussia Dortmund away from home. They were 2-0 down. Yeah, and, and, and it felt like it was all <coughs> Atletico Madrid. But in that second half of the first leg, you saw a much better version of, of Borussia Dortmund. And I'll use a word that, that Jürgen loves. Much more proactive. Uh, attacking Atletico Madrid. Getting after Atletico Madrid. And to the point that Craig was making earlier, when you attack Atletico Madrid, you're going to score goals because this team is not nearly as well structured as they once were, not nearly as organized, and to use uh, Jürgen's uh, description, not nearly as feisty as they once were. Part of that is the fact that I just don't think they have enough intensity or energy through the midfield. The legs are not there. Watching Koke trying to defend is painful. Watching Rodrigo de Paul trying to defend while you admire the way that he throws his body around is painful once you have guys that have speed and that can run off the shoulder of Koke, that can run off the shoulder of Rodrigo de Paul. And you see Savitzer getting into the box and nobody trailing his runs. And where are the trailing midfielders? Where are the defensive midfielders for Atletico Madrid? They're not there. And then you're saying, okay, well, you know what? We have defenders that can take care of those runners. Well, no, because Witzel is not a center back. He happens to be playing in that position now because he can't get around in the midfield any longer. And so he just, he's much better when he can just read the game and step into pressure. But when you run by him, he can't stay with you. And that's been happening time and time and time and time again for Atletico Madrid. Borussia Dortmund have exposed that over the course of two legs. If anything's going to send Simeone back into his defensive strategy is this season. Mm -hmm. mm. He's going to say, you can imagine him sitting down with the Atleti board and going, listen, everybody wanted this open football, I've given it to you and we're, you know, it's, it's not really, yeah. it's given us nothing. And I just feel that, you know, since they've got away from that, they, if you watch the Liga, they've been really exciting, I say exciting, they've been really good to watch at times. Yes. Very attacking, yep. very open, but it's, it's as poor defensively as I've seen them in a long time. Being open, Simeone's team's being open, 
does not suit his style. What a week you've had, eh, Luis? <laughs> Liverpool rubbish, Barcelona <laughs> out, Atleti now joining that club. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure tonight to talk about Barcelona departure and now Atletico in Madrid. But uh, listen, guys, you're talking about an Atletico Madrid that is not the one that we used to watch because before they were so solid at the back, they were well organized, they never kind of give away any, any chances during the games, and now they are vulnerable. But to be honest, when I saw today once again Aspiricueta playing as a left wing back, I thought, yes, they're going to see it on the back. And when you play against a team that is so dynamic and with that energy on the wide flanks that they can play with other Jamie and Sancho and Vitez in the second half, speed players, players arrive in the second line, you're going to struggle. You cannot defend for 90 minutes against a team that is got that uh, fantastic uh, dynamism. You cannot defend during 90 minutes with the players who are moving all around the places, floating and, and changing position and arriving in different directions. That is, is not possible. When the first 45 minutes stopped and then Atletico de Madrid was already losing 2-0, what happened? Riquelme, Correa and Barrios. Three players who are dynamic, energy and can run. And what happened with Atletico de Madrid? Totally different. They start attacking, they start creating. Why Atletico Madrid, when they are in a moment of that they have to defend, instead of defending, going forward, instead of defending, attacking the opponent and making them problems, they decided to sit at the back and wait to see what happened. Because this is not the first time it happens. We've seen this last year and the year before and the year before. That's something that I don't understand. Why arriving to this uh, point where Atletico Madrid, we are talking that they are good going forward, but they decided to sit at the back and wait to see those transitions, quick transitions. I prefer an Atletico Madrid that go forward, goes open, and see what happens. And, and if you're going to sit back, if indeed that's the approach that you're going to take, that's because you have the players to do so. Right. Because you got Godin playing center back, right? You have that personality. You, you, you have a team that is willing to do exactly that job. Look, we're going to break things up. We're going to break up the rhythm. We're going to defend, and we're comfortable. We live for this moment. That's not the personality of this version of Atletico Madrid, and it hasn't been for a while. This is not just today. It hasn't been for a while. Craig just made the point that defensively they've struggled throughout the course of the season. Th that goes back to even last year and the year before then. This is a team that has been stuck in between in this transition of are we really defending or are we attacking or are we open? And they're neither here nor there. And when you're in between, you get exposed. They got exposed today.